Hey everyone, welcome to Wildlife Inspired. I'm your host, Scott Keys, And today we're gonna talk about programmability and customization of your camera. And most importantly, we are gonna talk about, and you are gonna share the open <laughs> button right after this. Now, before I get into the video, I just wanna say, I try to keep the content here very sterile and uh, family friendly. So I am gonna refer to this going forward as the oh crap button, but in my head, you know what I call it. What is this, this button and, and why do I wanna talk about it today? I'm actually, I love using social media, YouTube. I read every comment that's listed, uh, Instagram, I like to engage, but part of it is it's a great community of sharing. And, and this video is actually you sharing with me, how do you program your camera? But specifically, very specifically, do you have a go-to customization button? And I do, I have one button that I, I'm gonna show you at the end of the video how I use it, but um, I'm curious how you use yours. And down in the comments, you can leave comments about anything, but if you do leave them very concise, I want this to be kind of a form where people can scroll, scroll through the comments and read them very easily. So don't give me your whole bank of settings and everything about it, but it, I would absolutely love it if you would share a couple of your camera settings, especially around this concept of, oh crap. And, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So in this video, whether you're a Sony shooter, Nikon shooter, Canon shooter, Olympus shooter, whatever you're shooting, this video will pertain to you. Now I am gonna go into my Nikon menu and show you a few things, mostly around just how far cameras have come. I'm not gonna go into every setting of mine. That's not what this video is, but it really, but I am gonna show you one setting, and just more about the customization and, and how crazy these cameras have become. So without any further ado, I'm gonna switch over. I've got a, another menu up, up here that I can pull up. You're gonna see through my camera for a second. So I've pulled up the actual back of my camera. So I'm tethered, so this is actually live. I'm gonna walk you through uh, a couple of settings and how I use these control buttons. Again, it doesn't matter if, what brand you're shooting. You're all gonna have this customization at some level. Might look a little different, but honestly, some of the menus don't look too far off. So when I go into controls, just why, I mean, this is what I really wanted to talk about with this video is just how much customization is available. As you look on the left, you're gonna see the icon for my camera. And on the right-hand side of this screen, you're gonna see the function button that I'm assigning features to. So you could see the function button here, function one, that's my go-to. And that's what we're gonna call for me, the oh crap button. Now it could be anywhere on your camera. It could be on the back of the camera, the front. For me, it's the one, and my fingers are up here, if you could see this, right there. It's the one I can get to the, oh, now I'm live view, but it's the one I can get to the easiest. So my finger's up here. This is my function button. It's the one I can get to the easiest. That's my oh crap button. Uh, again, I'll show you what that setting looks like and why I do it. But, and you're, again, you're in down in the comments, you're gonna tell me why you do yours. Why did you choose your oh crap button and what are the settings for it? A uh, function two is right under it. For me, I use this as a single point. So when I hit that, uh, if I'm, I'm shooting into tight spaces, and remember, I'm not an action photographer. I'm much more of a portrait photographer. So I want to be into tight spaces sometimes. I love habitat. So this allows me to get a focus point that isn't going to move that's very, very, very small. And then this is a, actually a zoom button. It's kind of hard on the Nikon to reach down there. I use this when I hit that. It gives me a, an intense magnification uh, so I can see things very far away. So if I can't identify a subject, sometimes I'll use this uh, instead of binoculars. But look at how many other options there are. These are for when you're in the, uh, the horizontal or uh, vertical uh, positioning. So you could see down on the lower left icon of the camera. Now this one's an interesting button because it's off to the side on the Nikon, uh, on the Z9 at least. Uh, we typically hand hold with the left hand. So this is a tough one for me to get to. Fortunately, they've added buttons and I'll show you in just a second. I mean, look at all this customization. They've added buttons on the lenses, so I can customize these buttons as well. I will show you this on my new 400 millimeter lens. I'm actually gonna put that on in a second and show you something. But for a Nikon tip, there's a, a really good one that I use right here. So this is the top right hand uh, side you're gonna see, and it's right here. So my figure, finger to release the shutter is here, but right here is the video record button, and it's raised, so it's easy to find. It is unassigned by default. So it's not, it doesn't have a function by default. I switch this FX to DX. I've just started doing this over the last couple months. The danger is it's a toggle button. So if you hit it and you don't realize it, you could be shooting in DX mode and never know it. Now you should be able to tell, um, you know, when you're in that mode, there's a little icon that flashes, 
But again, if you forget about it or you're, you're in the wrong setting and maybe you're in DX mode, you don't want to be, you know, I could see that being a potential problem. I don't know if I'll keep it here, but I wanted to play around with this for a few months. I'm kind of curious if you're an icon shooter, do you have that programmed? Because again, when you're in the shooting mode, it doesn't have a function by default. So, and it is easier to find than some of the other buttons. Your finger is right there near the shutter. So uh, the fact that this is a toggle button uh, really, really works. Now I want to show you one other thing through the menu. And we're going to talk about my oh crap button and what, and what I use it for. So as a portrait photographer, I am typically using 3D tracking, uh, what they would call it on the Nikon. So 3D tracking is a single point that moves and it attempts to follow the subject. So it starts off looking like a single point and then it kind of moves around the and follows hopefully the eye. But what happens when things happen? What happens when there's action? So my duck that's sitting in the water and everything's great now flies. Well, I've programmed this function one button very specifically to a set of recalls. So when I hit function one, it defaults to do something different than it normally would. It overrides. So notice right here on the menu, it says recall shooting functions. And then I get to tell it what to do. So the shooting mode, it's kind of hard to see because my face is over there. But I'm going to tell it to go at 1600th of a second wide open. I typically under, I know people are going to be like, oh, you should expose to the right. I know what exposure theory is. Uh, I protect highlights. So if I'm shooting a duck that's, you know, got a white head, a lot of times it'll get blown out. Uh, with the Z9, it's fairly ISO invariant, meaning I can normally pull up a little bit in post and nobody's going to notice that it was uh, not done in camera. So not worried about that. Down here, wide area mode. So I switch now from a, that that smaller point, that 3D tracking point, to a wider area. So if a duck, and I'm using this example of ducks flying because it's happened. If the duck's flying, I get a, a bigger uh, area to try to track it through. So I go uh, AF area wide. And most importantly, as a portrait photographer, I'm shooting 10 frames a second. And I know there's advice out there that says shoot, shoot 30 frames a second or 20, whatever your camera can do because it's all free memory and it's all free storage. To cull through with a 45 megapixel sensor at the end of the day is a lot. And since I'm doing mostly portraits, I'm not necessarily worried about getting 20 frames a second. So by default, I shoot at 10. But during action, I want to bump that up. So I go to 20 frames a second. Um, and that's that's where I'm at. So those are my settings. That's my oh crap button down in the comments. What is yours? Now I'm going to cut this video. Uh, I'm going to come back to it in a second. I'm going to show you a couple of things. I'm going to put this lens on and then I'm going to put my 400 millimeter lens on. And I'm actually going to show you what that looks and feels like live through the viewfinder. Now, unfortunately, I'm inside to do this. So you're going to see my refrigerator in my basement, but uh, that's, that's what we're going to do. So let me cut and I'll be right back. Okay, so now I'm still tethered to the camera. So you're going to notice when I move it, you're seeing live as I'm speaking and through the camera at the same time. A couple of settings up here. You're going to see that at the top uh, left-hand corner, it says 10. That's 10 frames a second. Don't really worry about shutter speed or anything else. I just want you to focus on that. And then in the middle, you're going to see that, that kind of single point autofocus. So uh, right now, I've got that in, uh, it should be in 3D tracking. Let me just see. It might be in single point, but let me just roll through here real quick. There we go. So you can see the, the focus options change. There's 3D. That's the one I like to use. So now I've got 10 frames a second, 3D. I'm shooting portraits of a duck. Let's pretend that thing right there is a duck. Notice my tracking. It moves with the subject. It's locked into that little magnet on my refrigerator. And now the duck flies. I hit my function one. Notice it opened it up. And it went to 1600 shutter speed at 20 frames a second. So that's my action setting. Whatever happens to noise happens to noise because when I'm shooting action, I'm less worried about noise. So I might be all the way down like I am here at 250th of a second to get that, you know, cleaner ISO. Duck flies. Boom, I hit the oh crap button. Track the subject at 20 frames a second. Get my shutter speed up. And I can still change the shutter speed. So if I need to roll it up, but it, it just instantly jumps that shutter speed into an action mode. So... That's it. That's my oh crap button, right? Not very difficult, not a tough concept, but I wanted to show it to you. Uh, let me turn this off and switch back. I wanted to show it to you and just see what you thought. And like I said, more importantly, I love to use this community to share in the comments and find out what other people are doing. There's a, uh, 
I don't really talk about a lot of other wildlife channels. I try actually not to watch a lot, a lot of YouTube videos because I like my content to be different. I don't want to do the same video about, you know, how to do this and how to do that. I do some of those videos, but for, I like to try to do original content. Now, that said, I watch a few videos. If I'm curious about something, if I'm learning, if, I'm, if I have a question, I'll go out. Um, I may read a, a message board or a forum. I will say um, I read some settings or, or it might have been a video or, or read it, but it was uh, Steve Perry. He's got a wonderful channel, by the way. One of the, if I was recommending YouTube channels for wildlife photographers, uh, Simon Dietremont is one of my friends and he, he runs a, a magnificent a YouTube channel. And I actually have always liked Steve Perry's. He's been around for a, a while. Um, so if you're not following those two, I imagine if you're if you're following me, if you're subscribed to my little channel, you got to be subscribed to them. But I do know that he had recommended some settings that were different. I probably read that about six months ago when I got my Z9. I was looking for how people had set up their uh, customization. So yeah, tons of different ways to do it. And a lot of it depends on your style. If you're an action photographer, your defaults are very different than mine. I am much more of a portrait photographer, so my default settings are probably a little bit different than other people's. But what I'm really curious about for this video is in this customization, whatever brand you're using, what do you find to be the biggest benefit? And what is your, I almost said it, what is your oh crap button? I do wanna show you one more thing. I'm gonna uh, pop on my 400 millimeter lens because with these new Z-mount lenses, so this one's a little bit Nikon oriented. I don't know if Canon, Olympus, Sony have this. It'd be really, really interesting uh, if they do. But let me just pop over here and get the 400 millimeter lens on here. I want to show you something real quick. Okay, so so here's my baby. <laughs> I just got this a uh, couple weeks ago and have been out a few times with it. Um, what I wanted to show you is, and again, other brands may have this, uh, but the, the new Z-mount lenses, you're going to get this little ring right here. Notice it doesn't turn all the way. It goes this way in this way. And what I have found in the past with uh, lenses that have buttons, so you'll see these buttons here. And then over here, there's one that says memory set. I did a video on this, by the way. I find this to be very helpful. I will pre-program, especially with the mirrorless lens or the mirrorless body. They have trouble fo close focusing. I I'm telling you, I did videos on this. Down in the comments, don't try to convince me I'm wrong. It still isn't fixed. It might always be an issue, but this gives me the option to pull back focus all the way and set it there. So when I hit one of these buttons, boom, it racks all the way back to minimum focus. Now, there are other, other ways to use this. I use this for birds in flight. I use this to pre-program like sweet spots, places where I think birds are gonna land so that I hit that button. But here's what's great about this, and this is why I love this so much. This new little uh, control ring, I can program, and I'll show you on the back of the camera here. I can program this to set and recall very, very quickly. I'm actually gonna show you, I'm gonna uh, tether this up again. This is kind of the bonus content. So uh, it's, it's interesting though. So let me, let me pop this over. All right, so now we're seeing through the camera. Sorry, it's 400 millimeters. It's gonna look shaky, I'm tethered. All right, now, so there's the focus. Now here's that, here's that oh crap button. So it doesn't matter the lens, right? That's, that's the oh crap button. Now here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pre-program this so that if I turn it to the right, it locks focus. See that little icon pop up? Now that tells me that focus point is stored. Now, if I go down here, I go to minimum focus. Now watch what happens when I recall it. All I have to do is twist it. I'll try to get my hand so you could see it. Twist to the right. Notice it recalls. I wasn't focused on that thing. Can't even find it anymore. There it is. Notice focus is right there. So I can set it anywhere. I could set, I got a little chair out here so I can focus on that little outlet. I'm gonna program it, hold it for about a second or two. You see, it tells me it's now programmed. And now if I'm up here, now watch, I'm not even gonna push the button to focus. I'm just gonna turn this little ring, boom. Focus recall, really, really, really great. Thank you, uh, Nikon. That is one of, uh, I undersold that feature when I, when I first got this because I didn't, let me pop this back over. I didn't, I didn't use it. Uh, you know, it was a brand new lens. I hadn't been playing around with it. But once I got that focus recall set, I was like, wow, this is really, really helpful. I can't, can't tell you how many times I wanted to do that. But the, the memory recall buttons here, and then you got to find these little buttons up there. That ring is, is great. On the back of the camera, 
I can just show you real quick again. Let me pop over here. Okay, if you go into the control settings, if you are interested in this, if you've got a Z lens with this command dial, you'll see it right here. So I've got it, I've got the button. And so this is the memory set button here. So that's focus set. Turn it to the right, also focus set. Turn it to the left, focus recall there. And then I also have the button set for focus recall. I may, I may change those, those buttons at some point. Uh, so again, if you, if you've got this set up, if you're fortunate enough to have this set up, you know, you can let me know what your settings are, but down in the comments, what I wanted to know for this video is what's your oh crap button. What do you use it for? Where is it set? And, um, I showed you my setup. So hopefully you enjoyed this video a little bit different, but I wanted to show you the lenses. I wanted to show you how I have it set up, but most importantly, again, just how do you have your camera set up? What's your go-to button? What's your, oh crap button what is it how do you use it down in the comments keep it real simple so everybody can follow along i thought this video was a little bit different uh hopefully you liked seeing the menu but also seeing through the camera and how it actually looks when you do that and if you've got these some of these nikon products don't be afraid to throw me some tips and suggestions down there as well thanks for your support on the channel if you're not subscribed there's a little subscribe button down there there's also a little bell for notifications make sure you hit both of those so you know when i have a new video coming out as always thanks for your support on the channel and I hope we can continue to find inspiration in wildlife together.